All right, now I'd like to introduce you to the Gyroscope Demo Lavia project. Here I have the Digilent PMOD Gyro attached to MXP Connector A. The demo is running. Here I'm displaying the raw data taken from the three-axis gyroscope. Here's the formatted values, and I'm plotting the formatted values versus time. Here I've integrated to get the angular displacement, again plotted and displayed numerically. You can reset the integrator at any time. Now let's begin with some x-axis rotation. Notice that counterclockwise rotation yields a positive rate. Again, I'm looking at the red trace for the x-axis. Then you can integrate the rate to get the angle. Note how the red trace tracks the orientation of the gyroscope. Now let's try some z-axis rotation. Watching the blue traces now, let me reset the integrator and then try some counterclockwise rotation. Note how the angular displacement goes positive and then goes back to zero when you return to the same starting point. Also look on the MyRio. Here's where I'm displaying the high threshold interrupt on the z-axis. Rapid rotations will make that interrupt go active. All right, let's investigate the block diagram details. The gyroscope configuration happens first. Here we have the main body contained in a timed loop. Essentially watching the data ready pin from the gyroscope and when active, collecting the data, formatting it, and displaying it on the front panel. When you are all done, and with the MyRio reset. All right, let's look at the configuration. This track is associated with the I2C communication with the gyroscope. Looking under advanced I.O., here's the I2C subpalette. Begin by opening a channel and you pick whether or not you want the A or B connector. You then configure the channel and you can adjust whether or not you want standard or fast mode communication speed. Here's the PMOD gyro address and that's used for all of the I2C sub VIs. This for loop contains the I2C write and the for loop accepts pairs of register addresses and associated data values. Those are then sent out sequentially to the gyroscope. I encourage you to see the data sheet for the details on these values. Down here we establish connections for the interrupt inputs as well as controlling the onboard LED. These make use of the advanced or low-level versions of the digital I.O. controls. Begins with open and then you can read a pair of inputs to monitor the gyroscope output pins and then here's where I'm copying one of those interrupts to the LED zero. Again that's the onboard LED. Now inside the main loop which incidentally is making use of the 1 megahertz clock and then set up with a 100 microsecond period. Inside this main loop, we look at the data ready pin, which is also interrupt number two, and when that's active, we execute everything inside this case structure. When it's not active, it's simply passing through with no action. Begin by reading three 16-bit gyroscope values. You do this by setting the address with the MSB set so that way you enable auto indexing. You can then read all six bytes associated with the three axes. Again, two bytes for each axis. Here I'm indexing this array. Index is located right there. Access pairs of 8-bit values and then join them together into 16-bit values. That's using join numbers. From there, use a conversion to ensure that we're looking at 16-bit signed integer. Those formatted values are then displayed on the front panel. Each axis has its own integrator. This is from the point-by-point -point version of the signal processing subpalette. So under point-by-point, -point, there's the integrator located right there. The integrator has 
the primary input, initial condition taken as zero, and then the time must be the reciprocal of your data rate. Note that that value must match the setting that you have for control register number one. This Boolean control resets all three integrators at once. Here we see the displacement values displayed as numerical values, and then I bundle them together into a cluster and use that to drive the waveform chart indicator. The cluster bundle is located right here under Cluster, Class, and Variant subpalette. In a similar way, you can bundle together the three rate values, and that's where the display happens for the top graph. So let's follow the propagating error cluster. We have one track for the I2C and another track for the digital inputs and outputs. These error clusters are brought together with merge errors. Merge errors node is located under dialog and user interface. Now, either an error condition or pressing the stop button on the front panel will break out of the loop. Pass through the simple error handler and then execute a MyRio reset.